is Alison Turner and I am the director at Turner Innovations Limited. Hi, my name is Oral Turner. I'm one of the director of Turner Innovation and I am the inventor of the soil harvesting machine. I was born in Gloucester, UK. Uh, I came to live in Jamaica in the year 2000 and I met my husband Oral here and we got married. Uh, I have always been interested in uh, what I would call serial entrepreneurship. So I see a problem, I try and find a, a solution. Oral is very creative and so am I. So we always work together as a team and if we see a problem, we try to approach it and find a solution. We started to embark on different projects. So eventually we came across the problem of sorrel and my husband, who runs a farm store, brought home Sorrow one day and said, we need to find a solution to this because it's a problem and I think it's something that's a problem worldwide. The hardest thing is the, the reaping. Uh, the problem with the, with the reaping is we get the flesh from the seed. Um, it's time consuming, you have to take up each one, one by one, then use a broken umbrella tool and push through each one. And you have to do it one, one, take one, go again, one, go again. And that take a whole of time, because for the whole eight hours there, uh, average plucker can do like about 50 pounds. So it's time consuming, and not only is it time consuming, it's also very costly as well, because you have to pay for labor, you have to feed the farmers, you have to cook for them, provide for them. Um, I mean, it is all day. So it's a very tedious process, and there is no known machine in the world that can actually cut sorrel, and sorrel is grown in 22 countries around the world, including China, who are the biggest exporters of sorrel, um, and India, Africa. So all of these countries are using the hand method that Aura was talking about. So we decided that if we could build something, then we'd be onto something really big. So we started working on it. Yeah. Uh, Oral started to run a light into the garden at night, stopped coming, coming into bed and there was a lot of arguments and uh, things started to disappear from our kitchen, my, my stools stopped turning, my brooms got shorter and uh, I had to ban him from the kitchen eventually. My souffle cups went into the invention, it was horrible. But eventually, um, one day after about three months, mm -hmm. uh, he walked into the kitchen and said, look, I done it. And he had the sorrel seed in one hand and the flesh in the other. And to be honest with you, up to this day, I look at the machine when it's working and I honestly believe there's a little man inside still plucking with an umbrella. It's just an amazing invention um, and an amazing journey. To run the farm store, they interact with the farmers so you can hear the problem. And the reaping was the biggest thing. And we start bring home the soil, start play with the ideas, because I think the main thing is understand anything. As long as you understand it, you can find a solution. The main thing is understanding. We actually pitched to a group of angels in Jamaica called First Angels Jamaica. Uh, they, we pitched the idea, they loved the idea, they saw that there was potential here, but the machine wasn't ready. So after their initial, their first phase investment, um, we then had to think about how we were going to run the company until we could get the machine to a com commercial level. That's when we diversified our plan. I came home after my first board meeting, not very happy because I didn't see any smiles at that meeting. And I sat at my dining table, but the greatest thing that happened for us was that while Aura was developing the machine, we were cutting sorrel constantly. And we had all this sorrel sitting down doing nothing. It dried and it ended up on my dining room table. Some of it had been sitting there for nearly a year and a half. And I came home from that board meeting and sat at my table and thought, what could I do to make some money meanwhile we develop the machine? And I looked at the sorrel and thought, I wonder. So I took some in a scandal bag up to a supermarket and asked them if they could seal it for me. And I stuck a label on it that I made up on the computer. And when the young man sealed it for me and brought out, he asked me, when can we get this on the shelf? So I said, really? It looks like something somebody would buy? And he said, yeah, we want it now. I was like, okay. So I took it to my next board meeting. They were really impressed. Um, we, they made some phone calls. We got some interviews with some distributors and we ended up with a product. 
and people just love this product. But before we went into this business, we decided that in order to be successful, and this was going to be the, the business that was going to help us be successful, I had to get proper business training because my other businesses had failed because I hadn't done enough research, I didn't have a proper business plan. So I went out, got trained, applied that to my business, and since then my business has just been very successful. The product is Dried Sorrow that we have now. It's our first product on the market and there is a massive untapped market globally, especially in the States, in the UK and Germany that buy sorrel. It's actually, sorrel is actually trended as one of the top 10 flavors on Mintel.com at the moment. It's the base for herbal drinks, teas because of its color and its distinct flavor. Um, it's very high in antioxidants, it's 100% natural and it reduces blood pressure as well as suitable for diabetics because you can add your own ingredients. Um, there, are, there are other sorrow drinks on the market in Jamaica currently and I'm sure in other islands as well. The difference with our product is that you can add what you want to it so you don't have to have sugar if you don't need to. A lot of the drinks that are consumed on the market now are all filled with sugar and there's a lot of people that need to cut down their sugar because of health reasons, etc. So that's our product. The support that we received while building the machine was from um, originally Roger Clark. He came down to our premises and saw the machine and was really impressed. I never had much access to tools and equipment to that. So I'll, most of the stuff we use actually is stuff around the house. Sorrel is a traditional Jamaican beverage. It's part of our history and our culture. So it's important that we now put it up there. We want to see it on the shelf beside the Blue Mountains coffee of Jamaica. It's that quality brand. The support that we received while building the machine was from um, originally Roger Clark, uh, who's passed away now, who uh, was the Minister for Agriculture. He came down to our premises and saw the machine and was really impressed and said to Aura that the next thing he's to build is a spaceship. So he was really impressed. He then sent his group Rada down to come and have a look, but we found it really hard getting financial support. Um, especially when it came to protecting our ideas, which was very important before we went to the press. Um, there were rules about IP. So uh, we ended up going to Development Bank of Jamaica and basically shaking everybody there and saying, please support us, this is a, an invention, it's about Jamaica and we need to support it. And they did, they stepped right up. They gave us a grant that helped us build an area for Aura to work in and to also build the new prototype and pay for the patent. Um, so we got our protection that we needed from them. Um, meanwhile, I did my business training and uh, we got the machine to a level where we could present it that it worked, but we, now we needed to step up uh, the machine to commercial level. I never have much access to tools and equipment to that. So I, most of the stuff we use actually is stuff around the house, like something from some other old thing on my scrap before. It's just like I'll, so most of the material we use at the, with the first one wasn't that food friendly. When I do research, we get to understand that most of the stuff have to be stainless steel. So I think that was the main challenge is to find the right material and stuff. Some of the challenges that we faced since going into the dried sorrel industry is weather. It's unpredictable and we rely on the sun currently to do most of our drying for us. So we're working on other solutions, a drying system to, to use as an alternative. Another challenge we have is sourcing sorrel. Because the sorrel industry had gone downhill because there wasn't a lot of market and the price was very high um, to plant and produce sorrel, um, a lot of farmers actually came out of the industry. But now that we have market and we have permanent market and we're going to be drying our products so we can keep it all year long, we're ready to take as much sorrel as possible. So 
we have to educate farmers to start planting again. The lucky thing with the sorrel uh, crop is that it pretty much looks after itself. So it's, it's once we get the farmers to start planting again, we can take stock, as much stock as they can give us. Those are some of the challenges that we have. I guess one of the other challenges would be is that we live in the country and most of our business associates and meetings are always in Kingston. So we have to do a lot of traveling um, backward and forward. We also have to uh, make sure that we attend meetings and go around to the shops to promote our goods, which takes up time. My name is Kerry Richards and I am the business coach for Turner Innovations Limited. I first met the Turners when they came through the doors at the Branson Center. They had started a number of businesses previously and they wanted to shape the idea of the sorrel harvesting machine. They weren't novices at business, but the direction that they wanted to take their new business meant that they needed structure. Not only did they need structure, but they also needed to seek other elements to help grow the business. We have an excellent team of directors who have been in uh, marketing industry for a long time. So we've been really blessed in that we have um, had quite a few doors open for us to be able to enter the industry. We work with some of the biggest distributors in the island, PA Benjamin and Facey Commodities, who have a lot of experience, have a very wide span and are doing a great job with our product. The whole industry, the soil industry, come like you never stop learning. Always every day something new come up. Because at first when it checks it out, it's a smooth sailing, but there's always something come up. As even right now with the soil, if you get the soil dry, um, if it stay too long, it grow like a morass thing. So you have to always observe it, you have to turn it, so it, it never stop. And there's always other ways you want to get the stuff easier, as in even the packaging line. After a while, you want to get it much easier, much faster. Same thing with even the reaping from the field. We still even now playing with some ideas which I reap the, from the field. So we always have stuff to do. So we really want to change the whole soil industry. And I think we can do that with the support of Jamaica, the support of our product and stuff. I think I have to help all it. Knowing that we've put Jamaica on the map by inventing the world's first sorrel harvesting machine is an amazing feeling and an amazing responsibility. It's a responsibility. We feel that we now need to lead and show other people that you can make something from nothing and you have to believe in your dream and you have to put everything you have into it, never take no for an answer and just continue until you find success. It's very important that we build Brand Jamaica with our product. Sorrel is a traditional Jamaican beverage. It's part of our history and our culture. It's something that we've been celebrating for a long time. So it's important that we now put it up there. We want to see it on the shelf beside the Blue Mountains coffee of Jamaica. It's that quality brand. It's something else for some foreigners abroad to remember us by. So we want to have it in all ports of call so that people can take the product away with them and taste a piece of Jamaica when they're not here. I feel really good because it's just an idea. The whole thing is just coming from an idea. And we find a way of changing the whole soil industry. And the machine still needs storage because the soil lifespan is like about five days and it starts spoiling. But when you get in a dry farm, it can put on like for months. Years. So, is as an other way of storing instead of adding up a preservative and stuff, it is natural sun dry. It wasn't a challenge for us to get our product on the market. People know and love this product. There is no competition, direct competition that we have. There are other products on the market that are similar, but we're providing a solution that has not been tackled in Jamaica yet. So we are in a unique position. The general public, especially on the shelves, they love the idea 
they want obviously to get the best price possible because we're not used to seeing it on the shelf and when you buy it from the field it's a big difference in price what a lot of people don't realize is that it takes 11 pound of wet sorrel to make one pound of dry sorrel that's a lot of work We live in St. Elizabeth, which is the breadbasket parish of Jamaica. So primary income here is farming. So we've impacted the community in a major way by encouraging farmers to plant sorrel crops. When we supply them with regular work um, that they can supply us with, with the sorrel crop, we provide regular income for them to be able to send their children to school, to plan ahead in the future, and just generally increase their wealth, prosperity here. So we're very proud to be able to do that. Farmers are coming to us and saying they're much happier now to be able to know that they can look forward to the income that we can provide by giving them regular contracts. The bold ones helps persons with marketing, and I think marketing of this new product is exactly what's required right now at this stage of this business. The changes that I want to see in Turner Innovations Limited as being a part of the bold ones is the change in their bottom line. I want it to affect their revenue. They've been able to create lots of jobs and I want them to be able to sustain these jobs. My name is Charmaine Turner and I'm a Cheryl Pucker right here at Turner's Innovation. My job is very important and why? because it brings in income for me and my family. It helps towards my kids going to school, providing food for me and my family, so it's very, very important. My employer is the best around here. Dried sorrel, the new product that we're now carrying, it is a product that will help the lower end farmers in St. Elizabeth and overall, because it will help to, in boosting sales for them, wherein the manufacturer can purchase from them, where it's a market for the farmers within the region. And it is also health benefit to customers. So I saw it as being an interesting product that I, would really, I wanted to really launch. My thoughts on the product, packaging is good, the taste is good, and uh, it's fairly an interesting product. I think the product will do very well on the local market because it's rare to see sorrel year round. Everyone has a different way of making sorrel and everyone can add their flair to it. Our product is bold because it is the best. Sorrel is a product that everybody around the world can get health benefit from, can get the excellent taste, especially if you add a little bit of rum and spice to it. And it's a traditional Jamaican drink that everybody in Jamaica knows and loves. So we have the best product and that makes us bold. Are we ready to be bold ones? Yes, we are. We've been selected to be bold ones because we have the drive and the energy to make a difference. We have a product that we know with the right push is going to make a difference to our country. We are creating employment and you need to be bold to be able to tackle that. We are creating wealth for our farmers and we're determined to make this project work no matter what and that makes us bold ones. We're looking forward to the exposure to get to people getting to know us and our products better. We're looking forward to showing people that there is a way for everybody to be successful. You've just got to have the dream and apply the right tools to make that dream come alive and become a reality. So we're looking forward for the opportunity to share our story and to inspire people and to create employment and create wealth all around our country. My vision for the Dried Sorrow is to have it on an international basis, supplying to the world, um, seeing Jamaicans use our products. In two years time, we will be in at least four other countries. We'll have our plant, which will be more organized, as Aura was saying, one complete system set up in countries, cutting and drying each country's sorrow for them. That's my vision, and it will happen. 
I'm Alison Turner of Turner Innovations. I am Oral Turner of Turner Innovation, and we, we are, are bold, bold ones. ones. My advice to young entrepreneurs is never give up, follow your dream, make sure that you have the right environment around you, surround yourself with people that will uplift you and guide you and encourage you. It doesn't mean that you have to cut others out, but you just need to know where to keep those people. Use all the resources around you, use the internet and find supportive groups, mentors and Stick around people that are successful. Speak to the people who can lead you forward. Keep those people in your sight and pray and put God first in everything that you do. That's my advice to entrepreneurs.